There's a special feeling here at Gettysburg. When you come here, it's almost like going into an eye of a hurricane. A lot of the people that were killed here were killed uh, very violently, very suddenly, and many of them literally bled to death on the battlefields. Their lives are cut short, uh, suddenly and horribly. And perhaps that's why a great deal of psychic energy remains in places like Gettysburg. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. More Americans died during the Civil War than in both World Wars and Vietnam combined. And no single battle exacted a greater human toll than Gettysburg. Many of the soldiers who drew their last agonizing breaths on that field were buried where they fell. Today, the battlefield at Gettysburg is an historic monument, but it is also America's largest unmarked graveyard. And not surprisingly, many ghosts are said to haunt its hallowed ground. Decided to take you guys out for a little nighttime car tour. See what we can see. You really never know here, guys. Like, it is crazy out here. We tried to actually take you guys up to a little round top. What the freak? We just saw a car turn off this road. And then we went by and there was no car there. Okay, guys, it's just us now. Wow, it's crazy out here at night, guys. It's so bizarre. I definitely see some glowing eyes down there. It's probably just a deer. Oh, wow, I don't see them anymore. That was weird. There's a car coming, guys. I'm going to get back in the car. What the freak was that? That's a dog. But I'm serious. I heard like a growl. Did you hear it? Hello? Why is the car shining off? 
Let me just make sure this part isn't any problem. Okay. Lisa said she wants to get stuck here. Hello? Why is this thing coming? Why didn't do that? What is going on? I don't know. This car is like acting funny. It's... See if anybody's up here to visit. Hello? Who's here with us right now? Doc. Doc. Yeah. Were you a Civil War doctor? I could put it through the radio if you want. But... Army. Army. I feel disoriented. I feel like we're facing towards the field. I but know. We're not. It's like so weird here. I feel weird all of a sudden. Just like a, a portal area. It's so creepster here. Is there anything else that you want to tell us? <laughs> Lisa! Ah! Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! I don't know. Okay, we're leaving. Oh my gosh, guys. Something just hit the side of the car. Jeez, I'm out. What was that? I don't know. Hurry up. Let's go, let's go. Don't worry about the seatbelt. Hurry up. Hurry up. Was that you? It sounded like a cannon. Did. It did. Please don't do that again. It's the little Pennsylvania town that changed the course of American history. Nearly 200,000 fought here in July 1863. And by the end of the three-day battle, more than 50,000 soldiers were lost. It was the turning point of the Civil War and is still, according to some, a pivotal location for paranormal investigators. In his book, author and Civil War enthusiast Mark Nesbitt has collected reports of paranormal activity by modern-day visitors to the battlefield. The Phantom Regiment is one that's been seen several times by several different people, sometimes in groups. They see a regiment uh, lined up out in the uh, middle of a field. They are uh, maneuvering, they wander around, they begin to march, they march off into the woods and then vanish. Um, this has been seen a number of times. Beyond the ghost stories, there are strange photographs that seem to have captured tangible evidence of a paranormal energy here. I actually didn't believe in ghosts until I started taking pictures and one showed up in my picture. It's the first time I actually believed there is something out there. I looked at it and I was shocked and I said, Tim, I think we captured a ghost. I think a lot of people just don't want to admit they believe in ghosts because it doesn't sound like something respectable. Charles Emmons has been a professor of sociology at Gettysburg College since 1974. He believes that the psychic trauma of 1863 may endure today in the form of residual haunting and is not just limited to the battlefield. This is Pennsylvania Hall. During the battle, it was used by both sides as a hospital. Four or five different people independently reported seeing a soldier walking around on the top of that cupola on Pennsylvania Hall. And I interviewed a student who had walked by there about 11 o'clock at night. He was very upset about the experience. He was not trying to hoax. He didn't want it to happen. He was obviously upset. And inside, strange haunting images pervade. Two administrators went down the elevator, punched the button for the first floor. It didn't work properly. They went to the basement instead. And when the, the doors, doors opened, opened to reveal not a scene that was cleaned up for storage, but a scene out of time and reason, a hospital scene from the time of the battle. They punched frantically at the buttons to get them out of this uh, hell that they had descended into. And uh, one kept of the- Kept punching the buttons and eventually got up out of there. But most of Gettysburg's ghostly encounters occur here, on the battlefield where 51,000 men died. We are currently back in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and we were just kind of driving through, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we heard a fife playing, and it was so crazy. We heard it a couple times. The first time, I didn't even hear it. Lisa heard it. And then the second time, I heard it, but it sounded pretty distant, and the third time, it sounded really close. So we're going to let you guys hear that, and it was really awesome. 
kind of like being in the right place at the right time. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. We were just like, what? We're right between um, Devil's Den and Little Round Top. It was about 6.30 when it happened, so just pull up. I think this is called Sickles Avenue, and you just sit right between Devil's Den and Little Round Top, and you might you might be lucky. Maybe it happens every night. I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to test that theory. We'll have to come back again. Yes. What? Yes, it was. I heard it before, too. Oh, my God. I never got it. I seriously heard a fight. Well, just sit here for a few minutes, then. Here you go. Hundred percent heard that. That was loud. That's a fight. I know what it is. That's not a modern. Does anyone want to communicate with us? We're going to sit the doll right here, guys, so you can see the doll, and this is Jenny Wade's grave right here behind it. Let's turn on the spirit box and see what Jenny has to say to us. Can you say your name for us, please? Uh, Wade. Wade. I thought I heard Jenny before that, and then it said, Wade. What do you think of your doll? Pretty. She said pretty. What color is her dress? Purple! It said purple! Hi, Jenny. You have to say hi to her. I did say hi. I mean, I'm sorry. I didn't say hi to the doll. I said I hi know. to the real Jenny. Well, the real Jenny Wade. Please stand up. Please stand up. Do you like baking bread? Did you bake bread for the soldiers? <laughs> Is your boyfriend Jack Skelly here? <laughs> Jack, if you're here, can you come through and say hello? <laughs> Is there anything you would like to say to us? <laughs> I love you. Oh, that's so nice. Oh my gosh, that's so crazy. Yeah. Okay, wow. That just melted my heart. We need a little Jack Skelly doll. I think they had a Jack Skelly doll. They didn't, but somebody needs to make one, quick. We brought little Jenny along with us. Eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. For those of you that don't know, Jenny's actual name was Mary Virginia Wade. Jenny, we have brought your doll here. We're not leaving it as an offering for you. This is not a gift, but we thought it would be fun to take her around different places in Gettysburg. And hopefully that will help you come through and talk to us while we're there visiting the different places. Just wondering if you approve of that. If you do, 
can you possibly make her move? You have a pretty amazing story, and it's so sad to us how early you passed. But your story lives on, and it will continue to live on, especially since there are dolls of you and books about you. You're in so many history books, and it's super cool because your story will live on for as long as books exist and as long as the internet exists. Oh! oh she liked the book story part. Wow! He Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Don't worry, I'll pick that up. was no, absolutely absolutely wow. incredible. She's okay. That was incredible. That was incredible. I witnessed that like from what am I? Five feet okay. five feet away. I'm in I literally there's good. Oh, and it wouldn't move her. she's head over heels literally oh, right now head over heels that is crazy about her history she likes the history part you were telling that that's crazy famous in history we actually witnessed this not once but twice we waited a good 10 minutes in the beginning. Nothing happened. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And then, bam, she was on the ground. We put it back. Received confirmation. Bam, it happened again. Gettysburg probably, as far as I'm concerned, is probably the most haunted battlefield that I've come across so far. Paranormal investigator Dale Kazmarek was asked to accompany a sightings team to the battlefield. Or nighttime surveillance. This area is, seems to be one of the several different locations that's very active as far as uh, paranormal activity. Uh, a lot of loss of life would have occurred right here. Among the tools of his trade are a Geiger counter, magnetometer, and other highly sensitive electronic devices that will register anomalous energy in the area. Our sightings camera was equipped with a special night vision lens to record in low light conditions. Most likely what I'm picking up are are small pockets of anomalies, uh, little slight deviations in magnetic field that might indicate a presence of some kind. Kazmarek spent several hours taking readings in an area known as the Triangular Field. This is the site where Confederate soldiers began the charge on Little Round Top. Some of the bloodiest battle took place along this ridge. Right there, I got a real high reading, real high static, static discharge reading right here. Uh, really no reason for it. There's no, there's no way static should be built up out here. Nothing to attract static electricity or negative ions. Got another reading right by the, uh, the rock over here, which was approximately uh, 20 on the, on the scale. Meter peaks and anomalous readings continued until dawn. I think it's very interesting out there, especially at the triangular field. We got a lot of interesting readings out there, including uh, a lot of disturbances with the negative ion detector. We are currently at an undisclosed location. This place has a very dark history though. A lot of people have taken their lives here. Something totally just hissed at us, guys, from this direction. It sounded like it was right here behind the tree, didn't it? It did. What could that have been? That was crazy. Oh my God. <laughs> like I said, guys, we are... That is legit an animal. Yeah. So... <gasps> <clears throat> Feels like something's closing my throat up. It's weird. And it did kind of smell like smoke before. Didn't it? It did smell like something weird, yeah. When we were walking up here, it smelled like smoke almost. 
It's so weird that howling was happening and then it just stopped. Can you see us? Gary, did you hear that? No. I was like, can you see us? And it almost sounded like someone was going, <clears throat> or like saying something, but it was a deeper voice. Do you think that maybe they're like choking because they were hanging? <gasps> and that's why I was having that problem? Possibly. That happened to me. Um, here, I don't know. Point six. What? Oh my God. Point nine. Point nine. Point six. As we talk about that. Wow. Oh so that's confirmation. Oh my God. Guys, spirits often will give us physical symptoms to uh, show us how they died, how they passed away, and what happened to them. As I was walking around with the mail meter, I asked, can you see us? I heard a man's voice coming from the left side of me. The mail meter spiked to a 0.6 to a 0.9, and before Jen was feeling like she was choking. So to me, that is confirmation. I think we are communicating with the spirit of the man that took his life here. I think there were multiple spirits here as well. But how crazy is that? Did you? That's that? crazy. Yeah, and I feel better now. Like it's I like he just was better. trying to get our attention. You know? Wow. Uh, is is the man here that hurt himself on this bridge? Can you? All right, ready? If there's something under the bridge, can you please knock on the bridge? Something is walking. Did you hear that? I heard something. It was like when um, twigs snap, when you walk on them, something was walking towards us right now. How many people died here? Can you please give us a number? Just seeing if anything, you know, might show itself. That'd be kind of cool. Can you show yourself to us? Like my backside is just like oh. frozen. Like someone's just putting ice Can you guys see this? Yeah. Can you guys see this next to me? What? What? Well, it's, it looks like fog. Yeah. Like I can see it in my camera. Yeah. And it was when I wasn't talking. It was just like, like it almost looked like a face for a second. No, I, you were not speaking and I saw it, but I don't think my camera picked it up. Residual haunting also seemed to be present in the inn where the sightings team stayed. The Farnsworth house, built in 1816, had been an ad hoc infantry position during the war. These particular men were sharpshooters. They, they were uh, most likely infantry soldiers. They were Confederate. They came to the house, maybe the door was unlocked. They climbed the stairs, the vantage point, and the most protection would serve would be the garret, which is the attic. They flew open the door. They lay down on their bellies. They had a great position. They were actually firing and killing the Union soldiers in the Jenny Wade. The name of the neighboring inn. When the soldiers were captured, one of them was playing a mouth harp, a popular instrument of the time. Guests claim they hear his music still, and Patty claims she's seen the ghost of one of the men. I got a very fleeting glimpse of him. Uh, he's a very tall, willowy young man, about maybe 17. If you looked at him and didn't know your age, you would think he was like 13, 14 years old. We're getting ready to do a live spirit box session. This live probably isn't going to last too long, but, you know, we just wanted to go live. We like to try to go live whenever we're shooting a vlog, just so that way you guys can kind of feel like you're here with us, so that when you watch the vlog, you're like, oh yeah, I was there for the live. This is actually the first place we did a haunted video, yeah. like ever, and we caught some audible voices right through the camera like we didn't have a spirit box back then so I say I'm really surprised but I know every time we go past those woods down there guys we smell things we smell like sugar cookies and aftershave we smelled before too as well um, and we always hear like footsteps in the woods so I know it's very active down there I'm not sure why they're not communicating today not I don't know. Not sure what's going yeah. on with that. 
not super active. It's not super active today. I actually did hear footsteps a little bit earlier back here. Let me try this one down. Maybe you catch that one off. Yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna. Let me walk over there. I just heard rustling, and it sounds like something big back there. Like their branches breaking. Guys, we're back. I don't know what happened. Something like mysteriously cut my. Something brain. like mysteriously. Something like mysteriously. Something like mysteriously. witnesses and new electronic data gathering methods, Professor Emmons believes we may never be able to scientifically prove the existence of the ghosts of Gettysburg. There are other ways of knowing ghosts. If you have the experience, a kind of religious, supernatural experience, it does something to you. There's just some sense of awe that tells you that something is happening here. And I don't know how exactly you study that scientifically. We may have to go beyond science to understand this phenomenon. For now, the spirits of the men who fought here can best be captured when you stand on the battlefield and feel the sense of history. I think since there was a lot of violence, especially the ones that were just literally uh, ripped to pieces, I think they'll be remained for a very, very long time. Most Civil War battlefields do not survive as historic sites. They've been plowed up, paved over, and built upon. But beneath the concrete and steel of our modern age, the echoes of the past remain. Many people believe that if you listen closely, you can hear them still. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share to keep fascinating content coming here at Nightmare Nexus.